My name is Courtney Gilbert. I'm the Curator of Visual Arts at the Sun Valley Center for the Arts, where we currently have an exhibition up called Making Camp. Um, we put this exhibition together to, in part to celebrate camping as we know it here in the Wood River Valley, but we also wanted to get at the way that camping is different in different parts of the world. So we've organized the exhibition around three ideas. Camping as a form of recreation, camping by necessity, and then nomadism, and what nomadism means in the 21st century. William D. Lewis is a painter based in Boise, actually, who um, works in a really kind of expressionistic style, heavy um, brush strokes, and, and very expressive in his use of paint. He grew up camping with his family, spending summers at his grandfather's farm in Alabama. Um, and he, he's made a whole body of work kind of about the human relationship with the outdoors, including what we have on display, which is a series of paintings of a campfire from kindling all the way to coals. That, uh, Dead Out is the name of the last painting. And these paintings, they're beautiful paintings that get at that magic of sharing a campfire with family and friends. Another artist who's working with the idea of camping as a form of recreation is a painter named Richard Bosman, who, um, he's based in upstate New York, and a lot of his work, his, a lot of his recent work from the last um, 10 or 15 years has explored kind of nature in the Adirondacks and how people experience and enjoy nature in the Adirondacks. We have three paintings of tents that have been used by um, two by Civil War reenactors and one by um, a Revolutionary War reenactor. And I think Bosman is kind of fascinated by Americana and by the American interest in recreating history. Josefina Gilisasti is a Chilean painter who also makes photographic projects. So when Josefina went to Marfa, she was struck by the visual similarities between these concrete boxes that Donald Judd had placed out into the landscape permanently um, and these temporary huts in Chile. And so she, we're presenting four pairs of photographs that kind of get at those visual similarities. And I think there's also an implied critique of minimalism because minimalist artists claimed that, um, that their art had no meaning outside of the object itself, whereas these, these huts on this beach in Chile are, of course, rich with social meanings. Um, the final artist whose work is a celebration of camping as a form of recreation is a Portland-based artist. Brittany had a residency in central Oregon in the middle of the winter where she lived in an A-frame cabin. So the residency was in a way kind of a form of camping. And during her time there, she started quilting these beautiful tents that she calls landscape tents. So she'd taken a regular tent frame and replaced the, the covering of the tent with what looks like these abstract landscapes sewn together. Two of the artists in the exhibition have made work about camping in other parts of the world um, where people camp because they have lost their homes. One of the artists, her name is Afru Zamigi, um, and she, she's a sculptor, but we're showing two of her large-scale drawings of refugee camps in the Middle East. And she started making these drawings after seeing photographs of camps in Pakistan after a major earthquake. And there's this interesting contrast between the, the attention and care she puts into the drawings and then the fragility of the, the tents that she's representing. Roberto Stevenson is a Haitian Italian photographer who now, he grew up in Italy but now lives in Haiti and after the 2010 earthquake there he, um, he began photographing the tents that people who had lost their homes made. They show tents that have been built with a kind of aesthetic and a sense of care and thought that, that really conveys resilience rather than um, struggle. And he's very conscious of that. You know, some of the tents have electricity running in them. There's a sense that these tents are going to be, you know, at least semi-permanent homes. So um, it's, a, it's a very different kind of camping. And the final artist in the exhibition is a woman named Ranu Mukherjee, who lives in San Francisco. And she began a project a few years ago that she calls the Nomadic Archive. And she invited friends and, and anyone really to send her photographs of objects that represent nomadism to them. For each photo she receives she makes a small painting on paper and these works on paper um, are kind of 
a document of what nomadism means in the 21st century, in this age when people are traveling all over the world all the time and we're more mobile than ever. Mukherjee's also interested in traditional nomadic cultures in the 21st century and what happens to people who for centuries have camped as a way of life by choice but now for a variety of reasons aren't able to do that. And so we're showing a film she's made, this beautiful haunting film that combines photography of, of real objects, rocks and textiles and jewelry with digital animation um, that she calls the color of history, sweating rocks. So in addition to the exhibition here in the gallery, we have a project on our lot across the street from the post office on 2nd Avenue in Ketchum called Camp Out. And it features three canvas, classic canvas wall tents that were altered by art, artists from Idaho and Wyoming. Earl Swope from Boise, um, Nathan Barnes and Mallory Katmeyer altered a tent. They are based in Idaho Falls. And then Diana Bombach, who's based in Laramie, Wyoming. So I hope people will go down to the lot and enjoy those tents too. The Sun Valley Center for the Arts is located at the corner of 5th and Washington in Ketchum. And it is open from nine to five Monday through Friday and from 11 to 5 on Saturdays and admission is always free.